The Maya biosphere is the second most biodiverse place on planet Earth. It is the most extensive tropical rainforest in Central America, extending over three countries, Belize, Northern Guatemala, and Southeastern Mexico. It is also known as the Selva Maya, which spans across 15 million hectares, hosting over 400 species of birds and 70 mammals, including the jaguar and the endangered howler monkey. This dense thick forest is a carbon sink and makes up for 23% of the climate mitigation needed for the entire planet by 2030, which makes the Selva Maya priceless. However, its estimated worth stands at $15 trillion annually. The bioreserve also has a rich history Within it are the mysteries of the ancient cities. Archaeologists have found that the Maya people live sustainably within the jungle while supporting a booming population for millennia. They became a flourishing civilization, creating engineering marvels. Research shows the Maya thrived in the forest due to the holistic way in which it was managed. The jungle was tended to by forest gardeners who had extensive knowledge of the plants and trees. This meant the forest provided for 90% of their needs, from food to medicine, utensils and construction material. And now, the descendants of the ancient Maya still continue to live this way of life today. However, the knowledge of the forest garden is slowly being lost due to modernization and deforestation. Between 1986 to 2018, the forest stocks in Belize declined by more than 28% around the Selva Maya. This is due to increasing forest fires, illegal logging, and from slash and burn to make way for grazing cattle and monoculture crops. This deforestation rate outpaces the national average by four times over. Not only does logging and burning a forest release more carbon into the atmosphere, affecting everyone on the planet, but it also has a huge local environmental impact and reduces biodiversity greatly. But worse still are the large agricultural fields bordering the Maya biosphere, which have been using industrial chemicals and over time have been degrading the soil. This type of farming has exposed what was once nutrient-rich soil to direct sunlight and torrential rains, resulting in the topsoil being washed away, which is practically desertifying the land which was once a lush tropical forest. When we, the Leaf of Life team, traveled to the Maya biosphere in Belize, we saw firsthand that the local people who lived around the reserve were also being impacted negatively by the destruction of the surrounding forests in which they rely upon. We met with a Maya elder who has been turning this situation around. His name is Naciso Torres and he is one of the last forest gardeners who holds the valuable knowledge of how to use the resources of the forest sustainably. In this episode, we are going to show you how and why one of the last Maya forest gardeners has managed to turn degraded monocultural fields back into a thriving food forest to support his community. And we will show you how he has been an integral part to creating a replica Maya forest garden at the local school to be able to pass on his ancestral knowledge that could be the key to helping protect the Selva Maya for future generations to come. So stick with us as we dive into today's video. We visited one of the last Maya forest gardeners, Narciso Torres. We went to his forest garden to see how he has transformed deforested barren farmland into a lush jungle food forest. We visited the Maya school forest garden at his local school, created to teach the future generations the plants and their uses, integrated with ancient Maya techniques of land management, so the pupils learn how to grow and manage a forest they can survive from, which provides them with food, medicine and construction materials. Narciso Torres is a Maya elder, forest gardener and healer who can identify thousands of plants and is versed in their uses for plant medicine, food and construction. He is an expert at identifying and using plant medicines. As a boy he witnessed the destruction of primary forest around him for monoculture agriculture and cattle ranching. He noticed how removing the old forest reduced the amount of rainfall, increased the temperatures and made the seasons unpredictable. And during his lifetime it has only become more exaggerated. He told us how the rains come late, or they come early, or they come too much, or there's not enough. But when he was a child, the rains were predictable, and they came on time. So overall there is less rain, and less water, and it's significantly hotter than it was when he was a child. Narciso had vivid dreams and visions of a future of drought and extreme heat across the world. So he began nurturing a patch of degraded, deforested land, 
used for monoculture agriculture to restore it to a traditional Maya forest garden using the ancient principles of its ancestors. Now, almost 50 years later, Narciso's farm is a thriving biodiverse forest garden with a rich diversity of species of plants and wildlife and his trees are full of birds. He shares his food for us with the wildlife. He wants biodiversity in a healthy ecosystem. Resembling a jungle more than a traditional farm, everything growing is either food, medicine or construction materials. He plants different fruit trees together, very closely, often side by side. As he says, unlike people, plants live very happily close to each other. His aim was to establish the same quality of soil found in a forest, thick with leaf litter and rich in minerals. The harsh reality of the effects of deforestation are right on Narciso's doorstep, as the land all around his farm has been leased to large farmers who removed all the forest to grow one crop at a time, which are called monocultures. There is a noticeable temperature difference on the exposed soil monoculture, which is far hotter, and the heat can be felt coming off the soil, whereas in the shade of Narciso's farm it's a lot cooler and wetter. He doesn't need to irrigate, use pesticides, and is a master of fertilizer mixes. Here he is using ash to protect and feed corn and tomato plants, an ancient Mayan growing tip. Narciso's expertise identifying plants brought him to the attention of archaeologists studying ancient Maya sites like El Pilar, where there was a city of 20,000 Maya living self-sufficiently for thousands of years. We had the chance to visit El Pilar with Narciso, who helped identify the plants around the site. Without him, they wouldn't have been able to prove that 90% of the plants were useful and that's how the ancient Maya could survive self-sufficiently deep in the jungle. He helped prove that the entire forest was managed by the Maya to cultivate food, medicine and construction materials. The fact that so many plants in the forest are useful to humans is evidence that the forest was managed by the Maya, almost like a supermarket, hospital and hardware store growing all around them. Narciso shares his knowledge with the next generations of his community at a demonstration forest garden at the local school in Narciso's village. The idea was to reconstruct a forest similar to El Pilar, the ancient forest city close to the school, so the pupils can learn about the different plants and their uses while familiarizing themselves with the basic principles of Maya land management methods. Just like their ancestors, Narciso is making sure the next generation grow up with an awareness and understanding of their native ecosystems, ecology and biodiversity of the area they live in, and how to protect it and preserve it while using it for food, medicine and construction materials. This amazing project is now a model which will be replicated throughout the country. Narciso's home looks like a small forest on the side of the road. Within the trees is his modest house and the homes of some of his children and their families. There are many plants, mostly medicinal and culinary herbs, and some large fruit trees. Narciso, like many Maya, grow their food on plots just outside the village and had their useful plants around the house and fruit trees to create shade and provide sustenance and a small income. Narciso's place was dramatically cooler than the temperature on the street. One of Narciso's roles as a forest gardener is as a healer due to his extensive knowledge of medicinal plants and their uses. Known locally as a bush doctor, people visit Narciso with ailments they might not be able to afford traditional medicine for, or when traditional medicine might not be working. This is knowledge Narciso has built up over years. Some of it is handed down through his family, and others came from people he met and worked with. Thanks for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it, make sure to tap the like button, and make sure to subscribe with the notification bell turned on. We the Leaf of Life team are passionate about sharing inspiring stories, about people like Nasiso who are making a real impact on the communities around them. Make sure to check out our links in the pinned comment and description.